Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got an exciting show in store for you this week. I'll take you out on Lake Michigan to meet a woman who owns her own boat and does a lot of great fishing. You won't want to miss that story. And Jimmy and Jordan have something else in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. And after we spend some time in Whitehall, we're going to head north to the port of Ludington, do a little fishing out of there with a charter boat captain who is a friend of mine. And we're going to learn a little bit about what goes into stocking the Great Lakes and how important that is for us as anglers. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor, the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. DTE believes to lead, we have to do what's right. So we're tripling renewables and cutting carbon emissions in half over the next 10 years. DTE. Whitehall here. Hopefully uh, the lake did a little flip, so hopefully uh, we can find you some fish. Um, we're starting a little bit shallower than normal because of the water temps. Um, we're going to run mostly a salmon program, um, some meat, some spoons, some flasher flies, and uh, maybe maybe one lake trout rig. So, um, but uh, yeah. How have you guys been doing so far this summer? Um, we've done really well. We've uh, put some good fish in the boat. Um, we had a good time, a good week up in Ludington. Um, we were out here last week, or actually Wednesday, for a day, and uh, we ended up 20 for 24. Um, it was a, one of those epic days where, you know, you're happy and, and everything's going right. So hopefully uh, we can repeat that. Tina and the guys wasted no time getting lines set on this picture-perfect morning. Fishing with Tina today was our mutual friend, Captain Mark Pananzak, Tina's fishing buddy, Jim Fortner, and her brother, Kurt Lamer. Tina and Kurt have been fishing together most of their lives and know their stuff when it comes to Lake Michigan. My brother and I have been fishing since we were little kids on Lake Michigan. Um, my dad used to take us out in a little 16-foot boat with a 10 horse motor and a couple downriggers on the back and you know we did that since we were little um you know in my my middle 20s you know late 20s i kind of got got away from it you know didn't live close to the lake 
Um, and now, you know, I've come back to those roots, I guess, you know, I, I, en I enjoy being out here. Um, it doesn't matter if we're fishing for walleye, jigging, salmon, you know, fishing the rivers, whatever. Um, I just want to, you know, be out doing something. I got my brother Kurt, um, a few years younger than me, um, Jim Fortner, who we fish with quite often. Um, we're, we got a good thing going, the three of us, and uh, and then my good friend here, Mark Panazak, who I uh, I wouldn't know you if I hadn't uh, met him. So I'm I'm thankful for that, and thankful for your friendship and his friendship. So we're having a good time out here this morning. As Jim boated the first fish of the day, Mark talked about how he met Tina. Probably five, six years now we've been fishing together and I met Tina through an open boat. I put a open seat up on my on my website and she came in on an open seat and we fished out of uh, Quantica Sea, caught a bunch of walleye, showed her how to run uh, spoons and stuff and uh, we've just become great friends afterwards. Not just uh, client wise, but now she's got this beautiful boat and. Um, but we still fish a lot. We still talk to each other and uh, her brother and Jimmy are great friends. So we've got a great group of people out here um, enjoying the day. It's a beautiful day. Nice work. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Two on. Two in the box. Lost a couple. But a beautiful, beautiful morning out here. Beautiful indeed. Another king was in the boat, making it three for the morning. Always the optimist, Mark talked about the positive side of social media. That, it's very funny um, how so I know some people don't like social media, but it's actually been phenomenal for my business and meeting people. Um, I've met so many great people through fishing that's not funny, and, and Tina's one of them, Jim, and actually yourself. You know, so that's part of the beauty of it is you get to meet a lot of same people with that same passion. Um, it can be bad in ways, you know, but I just look past the bad stuff and concentrate on the good stuff, but that's how I do my whole life in general anyway, so I'm good with that. That one's a little bigger. <laughs> Decent fish. While we waited for the next fish to hit, Jim ran through some of their go-to rigs. Now we have eight or ten rigs that always work, and we start with those and go from there. Netminder, Spin Doctor, you know, 10 inch with uh, meat rigs, any meat rigs. This is our little boy blue. Um, it's been really good for us. Dragon Slayer, Pro King, always one of our top producers. Any green fly, uh, green crank, it's always great behind it, especially on a sunny day. Uh, some of the spoons, uh, the Green Jeans Moonshine has been really good first thing in the morning. Uh, pretty much any of the Moonshine spoons are going right now really well, um, especially at first light. One of the biggest things out here is finding the right color water. You want that water with a green tent, not the not the blue water, find that stained water and you'll normally find fish. And that's where the bait lives and fish follow the bait. So that's uh, where we normally start when we're pre-fishing tournaments and I look for the stained water and go from there. So. I do. I'm also both that one. That's okay. Yep. That's that mark we did. I watched him nail it. Take one on. Better, a lot better one here. <laughs> That's the one. While Kurt was fighting the big fish, another little one hit, and Tina was able to reel it up and hand line it into the boat before Kurt's big one was close to the net. The action just didn't stop, and the fish just kept on coming. Good fish. Good fish. Good nice natural. Got the adipose fin. So, yeah. Good fish. That's what we're looking for. That's number seven. Seven in the box so far today, y'all. Right, cool. This fishing team was all smiles today. Even though they were out for a relaxing morning on the big lake today, Tina, Kurt, and Jim compete out here quite a bit too. We're trying to fish maybe three, four, five tournaments a year, whichever, whatever time allows. Um, and we're just having a good time. You know, we're just uh, enjoying ourselves. I imagine when you're fishing these tournaments, people probably do a double take a lot, right? Being one of the only women that does this. Yeah, a lot of times if we're at the dock, the, the guys will come up and tell the guys, oh, we love your boat, we love your boat. And they say, well, it's, it's her boat. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's it's I kind of call it our boat, you know, because we're a team and I couldn't do this without them. I'm extremely blessed to have this opportunity.
None of us should ever take for granted this beautiful resource and amazing fishery we have here, and this crew is very aware of just how lucky they are to have access to it all. Looks like we got a steelhead the way it was jumping back there. Keep coming, let them come. It's a big one. With a good mess of kings in the box and a catch and release lake trout back in the water, the crew was excited to have their first steelhead in the boat and it looked like Mark was fighting in another one. Wonderful nice steelhead we caught. This is our second really nice steelhead we just caught. I mean we're catching some really nice fish here today. Not killing them, killing them, but I think this is our tenth fish of the day. That's not a bad morning, I can tell you that. Good work. Beautiful. Another nice steelhead. There, there are actually women that uh, you know join in in tournaments and stuff, but I have, I have not seen any women that bring their own boat to the you know tournaments and stuff. You know, I, it would be nice to see. You know, it's a, it's kind of one of those things that you know it gives people an opportunity to see that you know women can do it. You know, women can you know run a boat, back it up, drive, trailer it. You know, it's. Uh, if, if you want to do it and you it's your dream to do something like that, go for it, you know. Don't let anybody stop you. Powerful words to live by and a great reminder that there is so much opportunity in the world, even in our own backyards. Special thanks to Tina Lamer and friends for embracing it all right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, when it comes to great fishing ports here in the state of Michigan, we are pretty blessed. We have them on both sides of both peninsulas. So much good fishing to be had, but it's always a little special for me when I get to go home to the town I grew up in, the Port of Ludington. Well, we're gonna try and get these kids some coho, and three-year-old kings have been pretty good out here lately, and uh, just see if we can have, have some fun. And where are we today? We are in Ludington, and we are in the 55s, 37s, 206 foot of water. Okay. And we've got uh, Sinjin, eight-year-old, uh, and then my two great nieces, Jillian and Claire, 11 and nine, and my first mate, Bo, who is only 15, okay. soon to be 16, so kind of a kid's day. Nice. So, be a good fishing day. been? You've been out quite a bit? Oh yeah, we've been going every day since July 7th, um, weather permitting, and uh, hopefully the fishing's going to be real good. Uh, it's been pretty outstanding, the coho fishing was good down south, we were supposed to be down there with you, and the weather didn't permit, and uh, the coho moved up here, and okay. the kings are big. Uh, Ludington actually uh, now holds the state record for That's a king right. salmon at 47. 0.86 pounds That's caught by Icebreaker. So yep, yeah, just a week or so back. Yep, Icebreaker Charters got it out of Bloodington. So, uh, pretty exciting. Hopefully, the kids can get a four year old today and maybe uh, get their big brother. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us today was Sinjin and Shane Surd and Matt Colby and his daughters, Claire and Jillian. If you ever wondered what a charter boat captain does on his day off, well, now you know, they go fishing. And with our early start, we were on fish right away as the sun rose. Good job, young lady. <laughs> Look at that big fish. Nice call. Nice job, team. Way to go. Is it the 400? Yeah. Up to bat next was Sinjin, and he was an old pro with his long 400 line, which basically means this fish was about at the pier heads, but not a problem for these nice. two. Yeah, nice and easy. You gotta go super fast. Kids up right here. That's right. Got our best one on the net. Yeah. 
So with some help from Bo, our first mate, the kids got a chance to learn how to net the fish as well as reel them in. Is that a skewer? Yeah. All right, good job, guys. Nice, job. nice net job. Yeah, that was a heck of a net job. Well, right now we're in 264 foot of water. Um, the shoot rigger took our first king down 120 with uh, big white paddle pickle sunshine, and then bows out and down is at 100 foot, and that took it on a uh, green hulk, and that was a lake trout. And the other one, which Sinjin got, of course, had to be the 400 copper, and that was a uh, white spinny and uh, pickle sunshine fly as well. So. So we targeted in really the whole water column? Now? Yeah, actually it's pretty deep. The whole water column, yeah, um, but it's pretty deep as mm -hmm. far as that goes. And uh, the speed is really kind of critical here. We're going like 2.5 over ground right now, and the speed down below is actually 3.0. So hmm. they want it fast. So that must be the coho in them. Yeah, and what's the good way to uh, differentiate a coho from a king? Uh, the best way is that the kings have a real black mouth, upper and lower jaws, and the coho have a whiter uh, mouth around it, um, not as white as the lake trout, but the big thing is when they hit the deck, the scales are falling off, it's a coho. Hmm. The sun was barely coming up and we had a few fish in the boat, and since the morning was an early one, it gave some of our crew a chance to catch up on some much needed sleep. But one problem we had was that we had more fish coming in the boat than we had nets for, which is always a good problem to have. The issue was our net was full of fish and we had a hard time getting the fish out of the net, but we had our problem resolved and Bo, who was only 15, had a chance to talk a little bit about how he became a first mate here on Silver Addiction. Um, two years now. Yeah, how'd you get into that? Um... We were, we, my family actually has a boat and me and Mark just became dock neighbors and he asked me if I wanted to do it and I was like, sure. Yeah, so you've been doing a couple of years. Is there anybody else your age that's the first mate on the docks? Um, there's one other buddy of mine, yeah. Okay. So. We were about 13 or so miles out today, pretty much straight west, which as Mark told me is where they have been finding a lot of coho the last few days, and lucky for us, they were still right here. Well, we're out over 500 foot of water, just uh, trying to get some steelheads. The kids need to get one more fish for an even 10, and then Bo, will buy, Bo gets lunch. Captain has to buy Bo lunch, so we have to do that. They've done well today. We've got a nice mixed bag of steelhead, coho, and even a lake trout, I believe, in there. One lake trout's probably 11, 12 pounds. So nice. they've done rather well with them being on 400 coppers and 120 feet down. So. And so this is, you, know, you can bring kids out here anytime, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It's any time to bring them out. Uh, we came out here specifically because of the size of fish we had out here. We knew that they could handle them even on the 400 coppers. Um, you know, primarily right now it's Big King and Ludington, but uh, this is a lot more fun for the kids. Our day was drawing to a close. The temps were about 80 degrees out here on the water and there was no wind to speak of. The kids were pretty much ready to go as we got the last fish of the day we started our journey in. They did awesome. We ended up with 10 for 16, I believe. The kids did fantastic and couldn't ask for a better day. I think you're the weather charm because last time you were here for uh, Fish Hunt for Freedom, it was the same nice day. So thanks for being here, Jimmy. Oh, glad to be here. How much good fishing is left here in the on the west side you figure yet? Well, the way the fish are out there with those steelers and those cohos, it should be pretty good. Um, you know, the big boys are still out there. If you want to come try and catch that uh, new state record like the gentleman did, I'd definitely give it a shot. And uh, I would say probably through Labor Day and then, of course, what weather permits. Okay. Well, thanks for letting us be here. All right. Thanks, Jimmy. Appreciate it. So with plenty of good fishing still ahead here in late August and into early September, maybe grab your kids or a friend and their kids and hit the big water. It's a great way to end the summer and put some fillets in the freezer. Thanks to all who made today so much fun here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, we here in Michigan are pretty lucky to have so many great ports to fish out of, but one thing we don't want to take for granted is actually how much hard work goes into stocking the Great Lakes. Here at the Platte River State Fish Hatchery, we raise Atlantic, Coho, and Chinook salmon uh, for stocking into public waters of the state. 
Uh, our grounds are open dawn to dusk and our buildings are open 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock daily, uh, weekends and holidays included. Uh, and you can come on out and take a self-guided tour or if you have a large group call in advance uh, to schedule for a large group tour as well. So we welcome the public to come out and check out our operation. We enjoy sharing what we do with everybody. Okay so this is the weir, the upper weir on the Platte River. Um, this structure here it's basically like a dam, a removable dam and it serves two purposes. It blocks the upstream migration of sea lamprey and then it also blocks the migration of the coho salmon, which allows us to divert those fish into our holding ponds so that we can collect the eggs. You can see right now that the uh, far two bays are open. So right now the weir is technically out. Um, the river's back to its natural state as far as level and flow. Um, but here in a, another week or two, another week, we're gonna be uh, putting the weir back in to get ready for the coho salmon run. We release uh, 800,000 ish into the Platte River and we do that right through this same fish ladder. So we just run a pipeline from our tanks uh, right out here to the river. All of these holding tanks here in a couple months once the coho salmon start uh, their spawning run, this is where they're gonna be held. So there's gonna be thousands of adult cohos in these ponds. So next we're gonna to head to our incubation room. Uh, that's where we take all of our fertilized salmon eggs and hold them until they hatch. I'll kind of show you what we do here. These things here are called heath trays. And the way this works is that we will fill each tray with, um, we'll start off with around roughly 10,000 eggs in each tray, okay? We'll close it up slide it in and so this trough up here is filled with water. The water then uh, trickles down through this pipe and, and through each tray. So there's a constant flow through all these trays and this is where they'll sit until they hatch. All right, so we'll bring uh, the fertilized eggs into here and this is, this is basically what a fertilized egg looks like. After a couple weeks, They'll start to develop eyes. Um, they'll be called an eyed egg. That's what we have here. You can see the little black eyes. You can actually see their backbone as well. So a few weeks uh, after the eyed egg stage, they'll actually hatch out, and this is called a sac fry. You can see they still have an egg sac attached to their body. At this point, um, they're getting all their nutrients from that yolk sac. Cool. And pretty soon, that yolk sac will absorb, and at which point they'll start to look like real fish. So once, once the fish hatch, we're gonna take them out of here and put them into tanks. So I'm gonna show you uh, our Atlantic salmon next. These are called our starter tanks. These are our smallest uh, rearing tank. And right now there are Atlantic salmon in these, um, but when the Chinook salmon hatch, this is where the Chinook salmon go as well. So. We'll take a look in these tanks. Um, we're actually in the process of getting ready to move these fish, these Atlantic salmon, into bigger tanks where they'll stay until they're stocked next spring. So they've kind of outgrown these, they need more space. Um, so we're gonna work on that later today. Lots of moving parts to this hatchery operation, including the alarm system that monitors all of the water pumps at the facility and sends an emergency page to employees who are on call 24-7. If a pump goes down, it could mean lots of lost fish and lost money for the state. The fish hatcheries also monitor the percentage of fish that return to their original stocking rivers. For the different species, there's different return rates to different uh, watersheds or stocking locations, but uh, for instance, coho salmon uh, return rates typically vary anywhere from uh, maybe 1% return rate on up to uh, 5 or 6%. Average is typically right, maybe right around 2% uh, return rate of adults. If you look out in the Pacific Northwest or in you know, natural systems that are very, very healthy or considered to be very healthy, the return rates are, are pretty similar to those. So um, when, we, when we hit those numbers, we're feeling pretty good about uh, you know, our programs. Probably the largest loss of, of offspring occurs in the rivers, so as juvenile salmon in the rivers, and that's why hatcheries are so critical to, um, 
to the fishery is because we're producing fish that are kind of past that point of, of high predation or, or, or low survival. And so we get the fish past that point and then stock them, and they have a much better chance of, of surviving at that point. The Atlantic, coho, and Chinook salmon were all brought here. Uh, there are certain populations through, uh, around the state for Chinook uh, that are known to be of nat you know, natural reproduction or wild uh, stocks. Um, it, it occurs in few, few locations though, and so um, to create robust fisheries around the entire state, uh, stocking is really required. State hatcheries operate on funds from hunting and fishing license sales and federal tax on firearms and recreational fishing and hunting equipment purchased. So keeping our state fisheries alive and thriving is just one more reason to recruit new outdoors men and women and pass along our outdoor heritage here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you join us in upcoming weeks. We've got all sorts of great things headed your way. We'll show you a series of dog training tips to get your new dog or old dog ready for the upcoming hunting seasons. We'll take you down to Detroit to show you a fishing program that's designed to teach inner city kids how to fish. All sorts of great things headed your way. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online, always a great way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website as well as the different social media platforms that we're a part of. We're also on YouTube, so lots of places you can check us out. And make sure you are checking us out over the next several weeks. Lots of brand new stuff coming your way, and we are getting into the hunting seasons now as we get into September. So much good stuff around the state. Get out and enjoy it. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? you can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in Southwest Michigan and Northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at GreenMarkEquipment.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. White-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above